Hello and welcome to this updated video guide for completing Som Al in Final Fantasy XIV Heaven's Ward. My name is TSDS and in this video you'll learn everything you need to know to have a jolly good time. Now first things first, let's talk about the trash. Before the first boss you'll come across these drake spur plants. If left alive they will continuously spawn pollen clusters on nearby players. These clusters explode in an AoE and poison anyone standing too near, similarly to the fleshy pods in the Thousand Moors of Totorak dungeon. As a DPS, as soon as the tank pulls the nearby trash, attack and destroy the drake spurs to prevent more clusters from spawning. If you do this, not only will you help your group, you'll also ensure that everyone thinks you're great. Right, on to the first boss. Relis Govnik is a tank and spank if ever there was one. As a tank, dip in and out of his AoEs now and then and GG. As a DPS or healer, just nuke the boss. Most guides will tell you to attack the bees that Reskovnik spawns because they will increase his damage done when he eats them. These days, however, if you just burn the boss, he'd die before the bees become an issue. Other than a few AoEs, the only thing to watch out for is when a player is marked with this big orange indicator. When this happens, the target player will be sucked in towards the boss just as he starts casting another AoE. This isn't a big deal or anything and you're given plenty of time to move out of it after being sucked in, but keep an eye out for it all the same. With him dead, let's take another look at some more noteworthy trash. A little bit later on, you'll come to this fiery area with these two dudes and a dragon in the background. The drakes do their typical AoE attacks, but the dragon does his own as well. You can tell which AoEs belong to the dragon as their circles. The dragon's AoEs will leave a patch of fire on the floor which unsurprisingly damages anyone standing in it, so just be aware. Eventually the dragon will land and then leave again after sustaining enough damage. Next, you'll have an ice cave with a similar encounter. The difference here being that the cryo dragon will spawn giant ice boulders that will reduce in size as they throw out glacier sprites. These sprites look just like little ice elementals and will head towards random players. Once they're there, they're self-destruct in a large AoE. With the trash and later cryo dragon already in the fight, this can get a bit annoying. As a DPS, you can however quickly kill the ice boulders before they can spawn many sprites. While these trash mechanics are a very easy way of telling whether or not your DPS are on the ball, they are very easy to resolve, so hop to it DPS. Past this area awaits the second boss, Myath. Like all bosses, don't stand in stuff, and for the majority of the fight, you can once again nuke the boss. Other than that, there are a couple of things to watch out for. During the fight, Myath will spawn a selection of blue and orange slimes which will just sit there until Myath jumps on them and flings them at a random player. The targeted player will get either a blue or an orange indicator based upon which slime Myath is throwing. This is a big deal, so listen up. If Myath tosses a blue slime, then continue as normal as it doesn't hit all that hard. If Myath throws an orange slime, then stack the f*** up with your group, cause you about to get hurt son. This damage is split over everyone near you, so running away or running away from your party member who has it is a surefire way to screw up. The second time Myath spawns these slimes, a giant green chime of the mountain will spawn. This blob should be attacked instantly as it will begin casting the last song. Now that sound like something you want to hear? The last song AoEs the whole group for quite a large amount and can easily cause a wipe if you're still running low from the orange slimes. Generally, other than swapping to the big green slime, DPS can stay on the boss for the whole encounter. But if you're finding yourself having problems with Myath throwing the orange slimes, DPS can also swap to kill those as soon as they spawn so Myath is unable to throw them. With this boss down, let's take a final look at the trash. Once you've dealt with a few trashy trashes and this mountain wyvern, an ergo dragon comes down. During the fight with this dragon, the pyro and cryo dragons from earlier will turn up. Watch out for the AoEs and kill the ice boulders as soon as you see them just like before. It may seem like a lot to fight at once, but focus them down one by one and it's pretty easy. Once up the stairs, you'll arrive at the final boss of this dungeon, Dio Man. Or Dio Woman I should say, as it's a girl dragon. Apparently. Dio Woman is pretty big on AoEs, making this one big don't stand in stuff encounter. These will happen pretty randomly, so the first one we'll look at is Chaos Blast. With this attack, a single party member will get a small AoE marker underneath them. Once this goes off, a bunch of line AoEs will spawn from the centre with additional circle AoEs under each player. 
Generally, this whole AoE goes off very quickly, so even if you're not the main target of the attack, you still need to move as soon as you see the AoE pop up underneath you in order to avoid taking a hit. As for the line AoEs, each line will hit individually, so if you're not fast enough, it's the ground for you. While tanking, face the boss away from the group, as Tia Woman has a moderately damaging frontal cone that you don't want to share with your party. The next thing to watch out for is Comet. In the first phase of this encounter, two non-tanking players will be marked with this big green indicator above their heads. After a short amount of time, a comet will begin to land at the player's location. This comet deals proportionate damage based upon how close you are to the impact zone, similar to the Ultima Weapon fight. If you get marked, run to the edge of the room, wait for the comet to start its ascent, and then run as far away as possible from the impact zone. In order to avoid Comet sitting all over the place, some marked players will move to the same location. While this makes things cleaner, it does mean you'll take double damage if you're not fast enough. With that said, healers don't stress too much as you're likely to be more than good enough to handle things at this stage in the game. The next mechanic comes at 45% health. The boss becomes invincible and players must instead attack her wings. When one wing dies, the other heals to full HP, so DPS must kill one at a time. For this, it does help if you establish beforehand which wing to attack first or mark the first target once they pop up to make sure everyone is on the same page. During this wing phase, Comet will target all three non-tanks, and sometimes a gold in the icon can mark random players, signalling their location for something called Heaven's Fall. This is a cluster of small AoE zones that drop around where the player was standing. Ideally, if you notice you're being targeted, move away from your group, but I never found this to be all that damaging, so... <laughs> For healers, Tia Woman will periodically cast Dark Star, which is a single tick room-wide AoE that just needs to be healed after. Once both wings are down, the main fight continues until boss death. Good job. And that is Sol Mao. If you've enjoyed the guide, then let me know, and if there are any other guides or perspectives you'd like to see, then check out my channel or feel free to ask me to create one. Thank you for watching and good luck.